Guess what? For the second week I'm starting. Feels nice. Tonight, I want to talk about the Jerusalem challenge. Yes, that one. The news gun crew is here to record the dance. I'm not sure we will. I will not even tell you about some of us who have two left feet. But I've seen so many versions of the dance in response to the Jerusalem challenge, from the slums to posh estates, corporates to families. The last few months have been about the Jerusalem craze. According to The Guardian, the South African tune by Master KG and Nomsibo Zikode has provided an uplifting soundtrack as the world battled the COVID-19 pandemic and has been streamed more than 60 million times, you can imagine. A group of friends in Angola shot the first Jerusalem dance video and therein the challenge began. Closer home, the bug has beaten our members of parliament. They shot their Jerusalem challenge video yesterday and I'm reliably told the final copy will be out on or before Tuesday's Mashujade. But from the clip, uh, from the raw clip that I saw, I can tell you some of our lawmakers have four sense of dancing, while others tried. But that is not my point tonight. From that dance, I picked two fundamental lessons that I would want to share with you tonight. First, the Jerusalem challenge is all about the COVID-19 pandemic that we have grappled with as a country alongside the rest of the world. That some fat cats have benefited from the COVID-19 billions is such a low, yet Kenyans have lost their lives. Parliamentarians have three cardinal functions, representation, legislation, and oversight. That some of the members of parliament are said to have teamed up with the COVID millionaires obviously rules them out of holding the crooks to account. It would be akin to asking them to find a lost goat whose slaughtering they participated in and voraciously devoured the meat. I always make. Let us hope that the many hours of grilling that we witnessed in Parliament over the COVID-19 billions will yield something. Otherwise, I will not be surprised if nothing comes out of it. The second lesson is that, as I told you last week, Politicians don't hate, don't hate each other. Only their interests differ. I watched the members of parliament dancing in a friendly manner, adorned in the national colors. Their attempts to synchronize the moves had nothing to do with kieleweke or tanga tanga, pro handshake or anti handshake, and so far and so, so on and so forth. Yet their supporters are almost going for each other's jugulars on social media, exchanging fierce words and hating each other. On their behalf. What is my point? Well, it is possible for ordinary citizens to do their own version of Jerusalem a challenge and while at it, remind each other that political differences need not result in political acrimony. That politicians, no matter how viciously they differ, will always close ranks when it is about their interests. Did you see how they were united when defending their tough when Chief Justice David Maraga advised, advised the president to dissolve par parliament? As I always remind you, you're on your own. Pambana na haliako. Hurting or hating your fellow citizen on account of political differences found by politicians who don't hate each other is nothing more than cutting your nose to spite your face. That's my punchline. 